Hello, my name is Miranda H.P. And I'm Connor Calloway. And we are the Bountiful Bards. Please join us in our first ever recorded D&D campaign, The Fountains of Cathedra. And? Here we are. There we are. We are recording now. Is everything live? How about the lights? Are they all green? Well, they're red, which means they're recording. Oh, Okay, so red is good in recording world. Yes, because otherwise know. it's gray. I thought, so, I thought it also means do not command, do not... Anyways, unimportant. Hello, everyone. We are back recording once again um, after just a, another brief period, after our long brief period. Hiatus. Because, yes, hiatus, yes. Because of some uh, rather interesting uh, life happenings, essentially my entire schedule got pushed back an entire week. Because I had to take a very important test, and halfway through my test, my computer crashed. So I had to go through all that fun stuff, rescheduling, working around my actual job, and things like that. So, but it doesn't matter. I passed. You I passed. have more. I have more free time now. One third of my entire life's focus is gone over the past year, and I can now get back to doing all things creative with my beautiful, lovely, talented muse slash wife. We're married still, right? Last I checked. Right. Oh, yeah, we got to do taxes, so we should be. Um, Miss Miranda. Miranda, how are you? I'm I'm getting there, you know? You are indeed. You want to tell anybody what you've been working on lately? That cross eye means maybe not? Well, I'm asking more for specifics. Oh, you know, all those words you've been... Oh, yes. I am I'm writing a book on accident. Every time I write a book, it's on accident. Absolutely. Books are accidental. They tell the best stories. I hyper-focus. I write a book in a month, which annoys Connor to no end, and then I'm done. And I promptly forget about it for the it rest of eternity. An, it only annoys me because she can do it so quickly. That's whereas what I, mean. I take a year. <laughs> I type really fast. Yes, indeed. No, I was just clarifying. Just wanted to make sure. Yep. Um, should be done pretty, pretty soon here. And then we'll see what happens from there. Yes, we will. Who knows? You may never see it, and us talking about it now could just be bleh. Who knows? Who knows indeed. But anyways, are you excited to play? I am. Do you remember what happened last time? Yeah, we uh, found a fountain. And then what happened? And then I freaked you out a little bit with some of my role play. And then um, what happened? And then I made the fountain work again. Yes, you made it work so well. I shot a giant column of purple energy up into the air. Not visible at all. Totally, totally subtle. Yeah, this whole do this subtly thing for sure is uh, possibly blown out of the water. But hey, let's let's get into it and see what happens. <laughs> but for everything else, there's Fireball. <laughs> I cast Fireball. Yes, and just for anybody that's keeping track at home, Miss Leah and Jimothy both did level during this event. But wait, Mr. DM, I thought in your world it was canon that they only leveled when they went to sleep and they had these crazy dreams. No. Yes and no, it could be any sort of things, and I was thinking with a huge influx, outflux, outflux. Well, it's coming into you, the character, but so it's coming out influx. of the fountain. Sure, but it influx filling the area with right. So so much influx raw, is the best. raw core energy of a bard, and why not Jimothy as well? Just got a power boost. Think of it like WoW rules, I guess. You know, mid mid um dungeon, and all of a sudden you're back, you're better than ever, and then you have a new. You know, little spell you'll probably never cast or whatever. So. I have to save it. I have to hoard it. Just like I am in, uh, you know, all the games I play, I get a really cool weapon or item and I just never use it because I always think that, no, 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 I'm going to need it for the next big thing. And then I finish the game and I've got these incredible items that I never use because I was afraid to use them. Hashtag mini nukes on Fallout. Yeah, exactly. Because right. the one time you do use them, you blow yourself up with it and then just like, ugh, really? Right. And then I want this one here. I'm just rearranging something on my computer. And then we are going to get started. Are you ready? Today's word of the day is minion. Minion. <laughs> That's minion. good. So we are starting a new chapter. What um, we're going to do is we're going to pause for a second. And we're back. It's been six years. How have you been? No. Oh, okay. Just kidding. Chapter seven. The tower broke. I know that in my soul, though I did not experience it. One moment I was in Radium, the next, there was a voice, then, 
I and others stood before the vast lake in the north. The Journal of Rake. Leah. You and Jimothy stand beneath a pillar of fantastical violet light. An illumination of pulsating power. A fountain, if I may, of magic connecting the mortality of land to the immensity of the sky. As you squint up, the almost noon sun attempting to blind the both of you, you see wisps of power releasing from the central column at the behest of the wind and leaving your upward-facing sight to gallivant off southward somewhere in the countryside or along the civilized road. Jimothy. Uh, we fucked up. A little bit. Yeah, we gotta get the hell out of here. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> All right. So will you two be leaving the temple? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Post haste. Now, if you remember in the last game, the temple, you believe there was an elevator, a magical elevator of some sort that could probably take you back up to the surface of the water. But exiting the temple, you find no puddle of water. In fact, you find a gaping opening out into a freshly risen, still damp island. Gray rock, you know, stretching out about 25 uh, yards in front of you and just jaggedly moving around the edges. Um, a lot of, you know, sharp, sharp granite sticking up, blocking waves, splashing, um, water still drizzling off from where this newly risen temple. And as you look behind you, yes, you can actually see the temple that you saw underwater is now out basking in the cloudy sun. Hmm. So we don't have to swim for it. No, you don't. Which is nice. But you do find the stillness of the morning that you left before going deep beneath the waters had been replaced by a susurrus of murmurs. Well, to your ears, anyways. I'm sure that if you were on the lake shoreline next to the city with the rest of the gathering citizens, uh, it would sound more like a cacophony. Cacophony. Cacophony, excuse Tumultuous me. Tumultuous clamor. Right. Oh my, let's just send it in. Now, what do you want to do? Well, aren't we supposed to call our little Dwagon friend at some point? Jimothy goes, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, this isn't good. So, yeah, we should definitely call Ross there. Um, you can do that, right? Yes. Yeah, we gotta do, We should do that before you know the church. There's a crack of thunder just before you. Make me a constitution saving throw, please. I'll do the same for Mr. Jimothy. Ooh, he rolled high. 17. 17. You also rolled high. Um, you are not deafened by this crack of thunder that just radiates from some point in front of you, but it's enough where you do have to cover your ears to help stop the ringing. The space just before the water cracks in a lightning shape, and then the edges of its occurrence break out like broken glass around this breaking of reality. The lightning scar tears, and a half-orc man steps through. He wears fine ceremonial robes of his station and grips a golden scepter in his right hand, the top capped with a hollow hexagon, the symbol of the church. You have seen him once before at a distance, and the inside of his residency recently. And Jimothy, who's apparently full of cussing right now, which you can't really blame him, goes, Oh shit! I'm gonna slap my hand over his mouth, and... It's Arch Cleric Kabod! Cast Invisibility... On both of us. Now, he's looking right at you. Oh, he is? Okay. So, do you want to do that? Because he steps out and literally walks out and sees you and makes eye contact with both of you. So, I just, I didn't get to that part, unfortunately. No, never I don't mind. Want you to waste a spell. I can't anyway, because I have to send sending. His voice cracks like thunder, of his, just like the thunder of his immediate appearance. And he goes, what have you done? Who are you? He swings the scepter out between the two of you. No idea. Who are you? I am the Arch Cleric Kabad of Miro. Tell me your names and the meanings of your transgressions. This sin behind you is the deepest of grievances. Prostrate now, and, and mercy of the angel may still find you in the afterlife. I'd rather not. You have no choice. Jimothy pulls out his sword and takes off his shield. As you roll for initiative. Oi. 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 So let me, hold on. Let me move this over. 
something about having just pen and paper when playing D and D. You know, I'm glad we have all this digital media and stuff that we can use. Initiative, I can't spell. But it's also very good just to have paper and dice and you know those spell cards that we have. It's just it's just nice. It is nice. Let me roll for the arch. Oop, that doesn't count. It went in the wrong area. All right, let's get Jimothy's and the arch cleric going. There's Kadad. Ooh, that's not good. So he rolled a 17. What'd you roll, Leah? 16. All right, let me roll for Jimothy. Jimothy will go last, unfortunately. Can you give me a bit of a visual of where we are before we oh, get our asses handed to us by this, like, hulking arch cleric leader, wannabe. leader of a yeah. of a temple in a city, one of the six arch clerics of the civilized road? Yes, of course. You know, probably one of the most powerful spellcasters you've ever been in front of, that kind of thing. All right, so give me a perception check, if you don't mind. We'll do a little, some, you know, real quick time freezing leah tries to take the take in the situation before we get rolling you know it's that part in a book when you're reading when the uh, omnipotent narrator goes on and on for several pages but only a second has passed for the actual character 17 a 17 what are you trying to take and in? i just literally want to see where like are we on a big platform or is it like like, is there stuff to hide behind like what, what does it look like where i am because i don't know gotcha so you just stepped out of the temple and from the temple entrance to about 25 yards ahead is the beach shoreline. And just imagine just cragged rock that is slippery from water still, just like you would see against any, um, not white beach, but you know, like wave breaking rocks and things of that sort. Yes, there are several stone, you know, boulders, jagged boulders that are up around you in between you and the cleric. The cleric is probably about... Um, how does 20 feet sound? Does that sound about right? About 20 feet in front of you, and you have these jagged rocks to your left and right that you could hide behind, theoretically, on your turn if you wanted to. Okay? Okay. Does that give you a better idea? Yeah, because okay. I didn't know what I was looking at. By the way, with that crack of thunder, uh, there is a dark shade that comes over the island as it lo you look up and you can see as storm clouds are not magically gathering quickly, but you do see that, like they're starting to build and thicken and dampen the power of the sun it's almost as if there was supposed to be a storm this afternoon like we're having here at our house later today fabulous wonderful so is that good enough for you yes all right let me roll up to my next area Vundava. so at the very top of the round it is going to be the arch cleric's turn and he senses that you are not going to what was the phrase as dumbledore would put it come quietly <laughs> So, let's see here. He is going to cast at a higher level command. So let me take off his level 3 spell slot there. And I will need to bring up command. And I will need both you and Jimothy to roll. What kind of check is it? Excuse me. Where are all my spells? There we are. I am going to give... As a reaction, I'm going to give Jimothy inspiration. You can give inspiration as a reaction. That's what it says here. It says, as a bonus action. Oh, bonus action. Never mind. I thought it said reaction. Right. Never mind. I was thinking cutting turn. words, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Which I don't think helps in this context anyway, because it's not an attack roll. Yeah. I got to figure out what the save is on here. <sighs> and stupid Bonus. counter charm is also an action. Not very countering if it's an action. You must make a wisdom saving throw. Jimothy will also need to make one as well, because he's trying to use it on both of you. Booyah, bitch. Suck it, Claire quartz is nuts. <laughs> what do you roll? Nat 20. Ooh. Maybe that has to do with your new power-up you just got. Yeah, fuck Let you, Let me bitch. roll for Jimothy. As I switch between my tabs. As I'm saving throw, it's a plus zero. That seems about right. Uh, he rolled a 15 even, and the spell save DC is 15 for the cleric, so I have to remember. Meets it, beats it. If it meets, it beats it. That's what Abria always says. Okay, if it meets, it meets, it beats it. it. And Abria is absolutely right. So as he leaps out, he tosses out this scepter and you see his eyes go a fog white as he does so. And as he speaks, his voice echoes upon itself as if no longer a solo in a chorus, but the whole entire stand is just singing together. Um, you both feel it reach past your eyes and into your heart. And for the briefest of moments, you're like, 
what should I do? Because his command word, he says, is prostrate again. And you feel your spines begin to try and bend over. But the two of you both, you know, lock eyes with one another. And then there's just this new burst of energy. Overcome it and break the spell. Timothy goes, well, we got to hold him off. We'll see what, we'll see what we can do. Leah, it is now your turn as you look over and the half work uh, definitely has it. And he's got a, you know, a well-kept salt and pepper beard. Uh, you definitely see him grimace and his teeth are showing. And you see his like chiseled tusk. What would you like to do? Um, and let me know if I'm over describing. I can go on those tangents. Sorry, I forgot to fill in this part. Okay. Um, it's not a problem at all. I am going to... And he's 20 feet, you say? He's 20 feet, I say. And is there anything I can... So you said there's craggy stuff. Is there something I can duck and cover behind nearby? Absolutely. About 10 feet to your right, there is a craggy rock. Okay. So I am going to... So this is a bonus action, and that is an action. <sighs> okay. So I am going to... Can I do a bonus action first, or do I do it? It doesn't matter. You do, but you do it in any order you want. I'm going to clap Jimothy on the shoulder and say, good luck. <laughs> and I'm going to give him inspiration. All right, Jimothy now has inspiration. And then I am going to zip behind a boulder. And right as I go behind a boulder, I am going to... How many spells can I cast at third level? It says three slots here. Should be just three. Yeah, because that, so that's cast, your highest one, right? Right. Yeah, so you just I got another spell one. slot for your level up, so yes. Okay, so I so I, on, I don't have only like one. I can cast multiple level you three You can spells. count three level three spells. Perfect. I'm going to fireball him. You're going to fireball the arch cleric of the church, thus solidifying that you are now an enemy of the faith. I don't really think it matters what I do at this point, honestly. Like, you can make it sound dramatic if you want, but... It seems like one of those things where it's like, if I'm here, he already thinks that. Like, even if I had literally just, like, been asleep on a boat and the island came up under me, they'd probably just murder us anyway. Hey, do you think they, I have all this character sheet ready for a fight if I didn't think that was going to happen? Yeah, I don't think there was any walking out of this, so. I mean, think about it from your point of view, or from his point of view, even. Yeah. He's the head of a church. He's supposed to, one of his primary jobs, apparently, is to keep this fountain hidden and protected. And guess what he did? He failed. So who's gonna get the blind? Who's who's gonna get the ire of the angel? It's not gonna be you if you don't get caught. So maybe he needs to catch you to help with some of that ire coming towards him. That's just some you know insight. If anybody at home wanted to know what was going on with that, but yeah, you cast fireball, so he's gonna have to do a dexterity uh, saving throw. All right, Miranda, pick a color, black or bronze for his for the d twenty I use. Black. Black um, it is. And I can't use a reaction on the same turn. No, you cannot. Not reaction has to be because of some somebody else doing something. It's a dexterity save? Yeah. What's your save? 15. He rolled a 13, so he's going to take full damage. 8d6, Ooh, baby. Oh, boy. Plus one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's quite a few sixes. Let's see, that's a five. So we've got six, six, five. Four, five, wow. six. I can't count. Oh, I, I hear a eight. lot of sixes going on over there. And then, oh, that's all right. I got one one. One one out of one, all one. of those. I got three sixes, two fives. For anybody curious why Miranda can cast Fireball as a bard, it's because she's a lore bard. And at level six, you get two sp spells from any other class, mil uh, magic using class you would like to. And she immediately said, I am going to pick Fireball because it's a classic. 37? 37 points of damage. Yep. Okay, let me see if he has anything that can help stave off any of this damage. Anything he can react with. Because he is a rather high-level cleric, and I put him together last week and didn't go over all of this like a silly... Look, man, a cab. All clerics are bastards. <laughs> no, they're not. You have a friend cleric, remember? Yeah, but where is he when we need him? He's in etchings where he was left. Okay, I don't see anything reactionary unless he has like <clears throat> counterspell or something crazy like that, which he does not. It's almost as if he did not prepare his spells 
for this day, thinking that he would be in a fight. He thought he was just doing one of his standard masses and had to prepare the spells to be flashy whenever he gave his uh, eulogies. So, no, he's going to take that full force as... What does it look like when Leah casts Fireball? It is going to be a brilliant, golden, sparkly flame that you see motes, uh, like musical notes, dancing in it. And then it's just one of those, like... Oh, wow. Okay. So... And then, but echoes and echoes and echoes and echoes. So when he's wrapped in this, he also gets, like, the world's most dissonant music ever. It's like all the jazz musicians all at the same time are playing 17 different songs. Okay, so you look around the corner so that you can see the cleric and then immediately play a couple of quick notes on your symphony of ivory summon up this golden flame that begins to wrap upon itself and you can hear this muffling sound inside and all of a sudden there is an eruption of musical of scattered musical notes and you see the arch cleric almost gets blown completely off of his feet so then he is scorched by this golden flame and as he is you don't see because you're against the rock but your brother especially sees that as the flame just disperses he doesn't fall over gets knocked back from the explosion his robes are burnt and scorched and the top half of his robes are now just nothing but rags that he reaches up and grabs and pulls off with a grimace and jimothy sees a cleric of immaculate muscle <laughs> um hairy chest arms uh, there's scars over his right, like, um, deltoid as well, and a couple across his abdomen. And Jimothy, Jimothy says, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> He's from uh, the Church of CrossFit. Come on. I guess so. So Jimothy is going to hold his ground, and he's not going to go running up there to whatever, you know. Does he have to make a charisma saving throw to see if he is, like, besotted? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, none of that. And I probably should do that, shouldn't I? <laughs> Okay, let's see what spells Jimothy has that he can cast. And he has inspiration. He does have inspiration. He is going to cast Firebolt. There you go. You'll get there one day, buddy. (laughs) You say that to him? Yeah. He loses his inspiration. Oh, why would you say that? I'm joking. He doesn't lose his inspiration. But he will be using it if he needs to. He's going to have to make a ranged attack. What is your inspiration right now? D8? 1D8. Yep. We will use the bronze for Jimothy. How's that sound? There you go. An 18 uh, to hit. So that, an 18 plus uh, an 8 to hit. So that's definitely going to hit on that one. He just wanted to make sure he rang true. Might as well. Well, he does 2d10 of of damage with it instead of the 1d10 because he's level 6 as well. Nice. So let me get two of my little damage dice out. Do a little rolling in my fancy new dice tray my wife got me as a gift for passing. Ooh, it was almost double double eights. Nice. So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Another 15 points of damage. That as it as soon as there's an eruption of fire, Jimothy, um, Real quick, we'll lash out with his sword, and he actually has made it to where the spell doesn't come out of his hand anymore. It lances down his sword and shoots out the end of it. Uh, instead of shooting it, he does a cut in the air, and it sends a fi- uh, uh, an arc of fire across the lash against the uh, arch cleric. How's that sound? This poor guy, man, just like, <laughs> flames, flames everywhere. At the top of the round, it is going to be his turn. And Did at- Jimothy move at all? or is he- Jimothy's going to move up to get beside you, adjacent to you. So if the cleric was to move closer, he could protect you from them. Aw, that's so sweet. Well, that's what he's meant. That's what he's supposed to do, right? That's what siblings are for. Sometimes. Most times. Who knows? Let's see here. Which one is a good... Yeah, let's do this spell. Excuse me one second while I pull it up. Okay, so the arch cleric. <sighs> of course, magic users. By the decree of the angel, I will smite thee both from this world. And you look up and see there are clouds building right above the two of you. But they're a little bit closer than they probably should be. And there, are, there is arcing white and golden light as they circulate. And I'm going to need both you and Jimothy, because you're within, th- within a range of a lightning strike. I uh, need to make a dexterity saving throw for me. Okay. That is going to be... A 17 plus. 
Meets oh, it. she gets plus four. Meets it, beats it, right? But you still got to take half damage. Um, and so Cutting Words says, makes an attack roll, ability check, or damage roll. So does Cutting Words work on the damage? Cutting Words is when the enemy is trying to do that. I know. So it says... As a reaction, when a creature you can see within 60 feet makes an attack roll, ability check, or damage roll. Right. It would help with damage. Right. And so that's what I was trying to do. Okay. So what do you do as you see this magic gather into a point and all of a sudden you just see the electricity? You know this is an electric, this is a lightning type spell as before it strikes down. What do you do to try and dampen the damage? Hypocrite. Uh, ooh, 15, 16, 17... 18, 19 points of damage halved, which is going to be 10 to both of you. And then you did what as well? The cutting? Cutting You had a roll, correct? So, yeah, I roll. That's right. Minus 7. Minus 7? Yeah. Okay, so you both take just three measly little (laughs) points of damage. As you say, hypocrite, and holding up your hand, uh, from your mouth comes this explosion of just, you know, force. And the only reason you can see it is because the mist and vapors that are around you kind of just arc away from you as well. It's a split second thing that just makes a momentary uh, point of protection that easily is burst by the lightning as it strikes the ground. Now let me read this through to make sure I got everything. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I'll do that next turn. Oh, well, that is after that, he is going to start moving closer and get closer to Jimothy as his eyes continue to arc with that same electricity. Leah, it's your turn. What would you like to do? I am going to... Cast Fireball again? <laughs> no. Um, I'm going to use Earth Tremor. Okay. And I'm going to do it... Um, when did you get Earth Tremor? You morning? changed it with uh, Major Image? Or something. Okay. I forget yeah. what I changed, but yeah. Um, Earth Tremor. Um, it's a 10-foot radius. Okay. So you're going to get him before he gets to your brother? Yes. And what does he have to do? He has to make a dexterity saving throw. All right. Where's that black D20? There it is. Uh, that's going to be 15 plus 1, so 16. Okay, so he makes it. Um, but he takes half damage, right? It On a failed save... So it doesn't say that they don't take damage? Well, generally, I think with Earth Tremor and other AOE spells, they take half damage if they if they succeed. It's called Earth Tremor? Yeah, and the ground is earth or stone, it becomes difficult terrain. Right. So that was my whole goal, was to make it difficult terrain. He's not, not ta- prone. On a failed but... save, a creature takes 1d6 bludgeoning damage. What is this? A... Yeah, that's Earth Tremor. So I'm guessing he just takes half of a d6, or does he not take any? Okay, so he doesn't fail... I think it's supposed to be he doesn't take any damage, but we're going to, since it's not really clarifying, I'm going to do the whole rule of cool. And since he succeeded, he's only going to take half damage. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so four. So he takes two. Um, but the area is difficult terrain. Okay, so that definitely happens. Um, how does What does it look like when you cast Tremor? How do you make it bard-related, Earth Tremors? Like, you know when a subwoofer is like you can see how when it goes yeah when it vibrates oh, yeah, yeah that's what happens is like and it's just enough that it's uncomfortable it's not the brown note but we're pretty close <laughs> okay so you quickly play a, uh, a note on your symphony of ivory and as you do the you play it but no sound is made um in the palm of your hand you know how a pianist as you are holds their hands when hitting notes you bring up your hand and there's just this globule of purplish power that's embedded into it you send it forward and it goes lancing into the earth a split second later, just like you said, like a subwoofer, boom, there's an eruption, just a column of, you know, just of air, like sound air, and there's just a breed that just goes scattering up, and you're right underneath. It is nothing but just a slush of fresh gravel. And then I'm going to, like, back up so I'm still peeled away, but, like, I'm trying to, so I can still kind of sort of see him, like, boop, boop, a little bit, but, <laughs> um, you know, trying to make it obnoxious for him to get to me. So, you know, like how you can just like run in circles around the boss and it annoys them. Yeah, yeah. that kind of thing. So you're moving to where? I'm just like, so I'm... Just, <clears throat> My apologies. I am I was already behind a rock. Right. So I'm just shifting a little bit. So I'm still keeping the rock between me and him. Absolutely. But I'm not super far away from Jimothy either. No problem at all. Uh, so that's going to be the end of your turn? Yeah. All right, now it's going to be... I always forget the little hook of the J. No, your dad's not here. It's Jimothy, not Timothy. 
All right, so Jim is going to go sprinting up to the cleric because he basically sees no other way around this. And he is going to make his two strikes with his long sword, one-handed. So let me get my d20s out. And if he didn't use his inspiration, he still got it. No, he used it. Oh, okay. Like a silly idiot. Maybe he needs to be inspired more so he can use it better. Um, hmm. Is that how that works? I don't know. Uh, so, unf well, that's a plus nine. That's a nine and an eight. He, I rolled a five and a four. So, let's just say, Jimothy runs up. He, ha ah, overhead slash. And as he goes to cut down, the arch cleric glances up at him and then just very easily shifts sideways and the blade goes right in front of his face. He goes to go a side cut and the arch cleric just kind of wraps himself up underneath and he says to Jimothy, you're going to have to do more than that than to take down an ex-commander of the Lance. <laughs> oh, old boy's got moves. Yeah, he's got moves and he's going to use those moves. Let's see here. It's a top of the round. Is the call lightning spell an action to strike down or no? I thought it was. Every round. It's a concentration up to 10 minutes. That oh, is damn. ridiculous. So he's going to do it again. Oh, okay. So seeming unbothered by Jimothy, he is going to arc his staff, because I didn't realize it wasn't a bonus action each round, uh, over to where the rock behind which you are hidden, and he is going to strike lightning there as well. So please make me a dexterity saving throw. We're getting in some combat today. That is... Well, I mean, it's still a 19, so it doesn't matter what's plus, right? Because I think it's plus 4 for my dexterity. Thing. Right, his save is a 15, so you are going to take 3d10 halved. Ooh, 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 okay. Um, so 28 halved. So you take 14 points of lightning damage. Okay. And he is going to, as a bonus action, cast Healing Word on himself. Is this kind of a kind of an epic fight, dear? Well, I, I expected it to be. Motherfucker. Okay, so he is going to cast that on himself. It is a level one spell, but he is going to use one of his... Uh, let's see, he already used Command. We use that. He's going to use... Yeah, he's going to use one of his level four spell slots to get him a, you know, several more D4s to try and heal himself. So that's a level one spell. One, two, three. He gets 44. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He gets ten points of damage, uh, health back. As his, he says to himself, Angel, bless me with your smite. Let me strike down these sinners. And as he speaks, his voice just from his mouth comes down this golden light that curses through his body and just knits up all his burn marks from his fireball attacks. Um, it's the end of his turn. Leah. You just got struck by lightning, and it just made your hair go all frizzled. My right? hair! He shot my hair! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm. what is that from? Spaceballs. Oh, that's right. Um, I'm going... Spaceballs, the movie quote. I'm going to... Let's see, this is... Uh, Jimothy's well within, like, 30 feet of me, right? 30 feet? Yeah. yeah. He's, okay. about, he's about 15 feet from you. Cool. I'm going to cast Aura of Vitality. Okay. Which is pretty neat. What does that do? Um, 30 foot radius healing energy. And um, bonus action to cause one creature in the area, including me, to gain, regain 2d6 hit points. Wonderful. So I'm going to... What was the original? You took seven lightning damage on the first lightning Three. strike? Three. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't do Jimothy's health, but now I had to do it there. Okay, so you're going to heal him and, and yourself. And myself. All right, two d six. Two d six plus one. Ooh. Do I roll for him or do you? You, you roll? do. You roll for both of you. Okay. Um, seven points seven. of healing. Seven to each of you. Yeah. So he's back to full. Jimothy's back uh, to full health five, and six, ready. Seven. Okay, so seven points of healing. Yep. Right. Anything you're gonna do for your bonus action? Um, no, that was the bonus action was using the healing. I think because it's an action to. It's a concentration spell. It's an action to do the aura, and then it's a bonus action to heal. Gotcha. So. 30 hit points now. Okay. And then I'm going to, like I said, I'm still trying to keep um, myself between um, Jimothy and like all that. Like I'm trying to keep behind things out of the way. Um, and I don't have very many of these. 
but I will give Jimothy another burst of... Wait, that was a bonus action. I'm good. That's all I can do. Okay. We're good. Jimothy is going to go to swing at the cleric again. This time, he actually is going to hit one time, but the other time is not. So, uh, rearing himself and getting ready, he goes for a jab, for which Kadad actually um, is able to sidestep up under, but then he's going to go and cut upward and actually get the cleric across the chest with his blade. Um, let's see here. Uppercut. Not very much damage, though, as he seems to cut, and the skin of the cleric uh, doesn't go as deep, making Jimothy, you know, really, you know, second-guess himself about, you know, a puny cleric of some sort. Uh, but let's see, let's subtract three points of damage. Isn't that nice? Yeah, well. Uh, so, Jimothy, he look, glancing over at you, he's going to turn to the right a little bit and make sure he stays in between the both of you. Now, top of the third round. The cleric refocusing his eyes on Jimothy, who is going to be in the way, and who just cut him. He releases his lightning storm spell. And is instead is going to get a little bit nastier, I think. If that's okay with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you think maybe? What is a cutting? I don't know what it means. Oh, he's just going to get a little nastier. He's always going to use a different um, spell. Oh, well, I mean... This will be his next level three spot. As he casts, he says to himself, bringing the scepter in front of his face, closing his eyes, and goes, Angel, bring me protectors and help me in this turmoil. And as he sweeps out his scepter, there's a golden circle that appears around him that Jimothy is inside of. And from this golden circle, globules of golden light build into four warriors of, uh, knighted warriors of the lance. As he casts spiritual guardians. Of course he does. Of course he does. How far away from you were you from Jimothy? Uh, you said about 20 feet or so. Okay, so you're right feet. outside of this range. All right, and on Jimothy's turn, he'll have to make a save. So, Jimothy looks around, and he's like, uh, he has reinforcements now, uh, and they're magical. They're made of magic. So that is going to be that, and then he is also going to use another bonus action to cast Healing Word on himself again. Because why not? But this time he's only going to do level 2. So that's 2d4. Wow, he's hanging out more than I thought he would. Oops. Okay, Leah. Yep. Go to work. Dissonant Whispers. All right. He needs to make a Wisdom Saving Throw. Wisdom Saving Throw. My d4 fell in this little pocket and I can't get it out. Eh, my hands are sweaty. Uh, wisdom Saving Throw. Uh-huh. Uh, he rolled a 9 plus... Wow. 16? He is a cleric after all. Yeah, well, obviously he makes it, but he still takes half as much damage. There you go. Um, and oh, I'm going to have cast that at the second level, I believe. Okay. Because that gives me the extra damage on it. All right. So even though it's failed, it's, he still takes 46. 4d6, not yes. 46 damage. Yeah. I do that. I say that more for myself. I get it all the time. 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, so 11 points of damage. Ooh, boy. What do you say to him then when you cast Dissonant Whispers and it just echoes upon itself? I'm just going to keep repeating hypocrite, hypocrite, hypocrite. Oh, okay. How is your so magic just... any different than ours? And it's just, just, it's like, you know, before where it's like those little, little wiggling insecurities just Absolutely. kind of like pulling on those like those thoughts he's definitely had but he like you know pushes them down oh yeah like it's just like feeding on those just amplifying them over and over and over again well as you do that and he kind of knocks his head a little bit uh let's see he has to do a concentration check i believe doesn't he yeah but yeah. i mean it was so he did 11 points of damage yes so I think it's um, concentration. How does a concentration roll work? Yeah, you just have to. I think it's like half the damage, isn't it? It's like five or something really low. Yeah, and he makes his save. Okay, so awesome. Jimothy's turn at um, on the beginning. Bonus action, he gets two d six. Two d six. Uh, health points. He gets seven points of healing back. Jimothy does. Yep. And so do you. Yes, that's right. I do. All right. Thank you. So I forget. Jimothy's got to make a saving throw against the warriors. He does not. And he has to take 3d8 damage. So where are my d8s at? 
<laughs> Where are all my D8s at? I'm missing one. Oh, there it is. Let me get these dice out of this box. That one too. So, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 points of damage Jimothy takes, which mm. brings him down to 43. Um, as the warriors just go up, one slams its golden sword into his shield that knocks him to the side. Another one slices across his calf, and another one tries to, uh, just slams him with a war hammer in his chest. Um, and all, all that time while he's doing that, Jimothy is going to try and fight back. Um, going right for the cleric, he's going to roll both his attacks again. Let me pull out the other d20. And you said you gave him an inspiration, right? No, I haven't given him another one yet. Oh yeah, you couldn't do that yet. My bad. All right. I can only use so many bonus actions. <laughs> right. Let me see if there's anything here Jimothy can also use. Uh, yes, there is actually. We are going to... He's going to pull all, pull out all his stomps because he's a fighter. He's going to use action surge. So, two attacks. Clean clang. Ah, that's a natural one. That's not going to hit. But this one does hit. So, one of his attacks hits. Um, and then the next one on his action surge, he gets two more attacks. And not that the cleric is going to move because Jimothy's right there. But if he does try to, he's still on difficult terrain. Yes. And the three of those attacks are going to hit. So... So, going up, Jimothy is going to do 13 points of damage as he goes up. One of the warriors goes to swing, and this time he plants his foot, parries with his shield, knocking that uh, spiritual guardian uh, you know, away. Steps up to the next one. Sword matches an axe. He cuts it around, spinning the soldier out of the way. Goes right up to the cleric. Goes for a swing. The cleric ducks up underneath. Jimothy drops the, el the elbow of his shield onto the top of his head and then cuts him in his shoulder. Um, and then does two more successful attacks as he just boosts himself with his own magic. Uh, bring, getting 13 points of damage and bringing the cleric down to a lower level. He does not look good. Um, before we end this round, Leah, give me a perception check. And Jimothy will as well. 15. 15. Uh, Jimothy also sees it. You look over as you hear a, a, a cry, an, an animalistic, bestial cry up in the sky. And you look over and you see five large as horse heads of an eagle, wings spread out. These are griffins, five of them flying towards you, wearing shining armor. And on the back of each one, it seems to be two individuals as uh, the church is bringing reinforcements. It seems that the arch cleric used his magic to immediately get to where the problem was, but now the rest of the lance is starting to catch up. Okay. And then Swin Jimothy goes, we kind of need to get out of here. I'm aware. He's just, you know, scared. Okay, so is it my turn? No, it's the arch cleric's turn. Oh, I thought he did his thing. Never mind. No, no. Oh, yeah, he, he just that was damage. That was just for Jimothy. He got beat yeah. up, that's right. His AOE. He's going to actually swing at Jimothy. He's going to swing his scepter. Which I guess could be worked as an impromptu mace of some sort. In fact, it is a mace. I was going to say, that makes a lot of sense for a cleric. Spare the rod and spoil the child. <laughs> Easy. Yes, he gets blessed strikes, so he's going to get an extra d8 when he attacks. And I'm going to say, you're a bully and a coward. And those extra carbs you're using are starting to show. <laughs> Is that cellulite? Oh goodness! Would you stop it? <laughs> cutting words. He's in his he's in his mid forties. I don't long. care. So you're gonna use cutting Everyone words. Everyone can tell you're using attack. a tanning bed. Oh my goodness, Miranda! Yeah. Stop it! You're hurting my feelings. <laughs> oh, I rolled an eight. On this cutting on the cutting words. Yeah. Okay, I think he gets two attacks because he's um at level five. I think clerics get two attacks. Well, cutting words. Whichever one looked the worst. <laughs> No, no, he does not get an extra attack. So he tries to roll. Uh, well, you're not going to have any problems because he rolled a two. So no. cutting words makes that to a zero as he goes to slam his cudgel down or his mace down. And Jimothy steps back. And as the mace hits the ground, there is a blast of golden light as um, the un the terrain there just explodes upward once again because you've made nothing but loose gravel. Um, but as a bonus action, he can't do anything. Oh, yes, he can. He can cast Healing Word on himself again. And this time... He's going to cast it at level 5, so he gets lots of healing back. Wow, who'd have thought a healer could hold his own this long? <laughs> Don't at me. 
Well, I hope Jimothy can figure it out because I cannot do anything anymore. So, what do you mean you can't do anything anymore? Well, I only have so many actions and bonus actions I can use per turn. I understand. And we've got reinforcements coming. And since I've had the audacity to try to keep us alive, we weren't able to kill this bastard. So, <laughs> well, it's your turn. What do you do? Well, I'm obviously going to use sending to call for the stupid dragon because we have to get out of here. Why are you calling Rystar stupid? Why are you squinting at me? Because I'm going to kill you now. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> I attack the DM in real life. Oh, no. Ah! <laughs> Don't make me come over this piano. I think I could get out in time. There's two windows. Behind me. Hmm. I will cast Sending and tell him to get his scaly little butt over to us right now because we've got Griffins inbound. Understood. You know, island, center, really visible, really obvious. Giant column of purple yeah. light. Yeah, should be pretty easy for him to find us. All right. It is. And then a bonus action, healing again. All right. What do you heal you and Jimothy? Yeah, of course. It's just a constant healing. Yes. We be two immortals locked in a constant state of fighting. Yeah, we don't get that much healing back. We get five points of healing, so it could be better, could be worse. All right. Jimothy is going to make his two attacks at the cleric. Oh, no, it's, he's going to make first off a uh, saving throw, a wisdom saving throw, which he fails with a natural one. Good and he job, takes, Jimothy. You leave him alone. Jimothy takes, ooh, ooh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23 points of damage. He is down to half health. As haggard as the uh, other magical knights begin to strike at him, he is going to try and strike back with uh, both of these actually hit, though. So there, be proud of your brother for that, right? That's just really bad timing because, like, he always takes the damage after I heal him. And I can't do anything about it, so... True. Ooh, he does 15 points of damage. The cleric is still looking haggard. Um, that is the end of Jimothy's turn. It is the cleric's turn again. But before the cleric can do anything... Whoosh! Slam! A gust of wind comes out. And you and your brother are both beneath the large silver wings of Rysar, who seem to have gotten a little bigger, you know, since the very first time you saw him, at least. Uh, and he's using his new stats because he just had a birthday a couple of months ago and is now six years old, which makes him a young silver dragon and not a wormling anymore. Yay. He is going to breathe in and exhale at the cleric who just grits his teeth up at this new dragon who just swooped in out of nowhere. Uh, let's see, the cleric has to make a constitution saving throw. He fails. Um, and you see his body just begin to seize up as uh, this paralyzing breath comes out of the young silver dragon. And just like this, you know, looks like shimmering waves in the air. Uh, and you just see the cleric just lock up completely. And um, yeah, and Rysar goes, uh... Are we leaving? Yes. All right. So what do you do? Well, is it our turn? Yes, it's your turn now. As Rysar has entered the battlefield. I was going to be like, um... No. No. Stop it. No. We're going to get we're gonna get shut down. Why? Because I'm playing it? That's yeah. not how that works. I don't know about all that. <clears throat> okay. Powerful people so the guy is knocked prone, you said? No, he is paralyzed. Oh, he's paralyzed. Right. And you said he looks really rough? Yeah, he does look pretty rough. Okay. Um, I'm going to move to Rysar. Okay. And I'm going to cast Chromatic Orb. Okay. At him. All right. Do I get advantage because he is paralyzed? Yeah. And he cannot move? For now, yeah. Um, that is a very large number. It's 15 plus 8. To hit. That hits? Okay. And that's 3d8 plus 1. And you know what? We're going to stay on theme here. Um, and actually, I think we're going to go off theme and I'm going to do... Oh, it doesn't let me do that. Oh, you know, it does cold. Cold damage. We're going to freeze his little toesies down. Okay. So how much um, damage altogether? So let me do 3d8 plus 1. Fourteen. 14 points of damage. 14 frozy toesies. Okay. 
He is still up as his body begins to be covered in frost as you throw this chromatic orb of ice into his chest and it hits him and then scatters across his body. Uh, He does not shiver because he is paralyzed. I'm going to bonus action um, heal Jimothy. Okay. Um, Six points of healing. Right. And I should be pretty close to the dragon at this point. You are pretty close to the dragon. It's like right next to you. I'm peeking behind him because, you know. (laughs) It's all right. (laughs) I'm squishy. I got you. All right. Jimothy says, okay, let's get out of here. And he goes to start backstepping. He goes with an uppercut again to do his firebolt. And as it does, it slams across the chest of the half-orc who hit takes it. And he seems like he's just had enough where he falls backwards, collapsing. And his spiritual guardians go bye-bye. They do go bye-bye. So Jimothy begins to climb up on Rysar. Uh, What do you do? Is he dead or unconscious? He's unconscious right now. I don't know if killing him is a good idea or not. (laughs) What do you think, Jimothy? We No, no. Okay. No. Fighting is one thing. If we kill him, the whole lance is coming. I will then... Okay, so we're, we're going to get on Rysar, and I want Rysar to get 30 feet up off the ground. Okay. And then I will... Boop, healing word. And then <laughs> <laughs> on who? On the cleric. You don't need to do that, actually, because as you, as you tell him to do that, and you start to get up, and you go to cast it, right before you do, you see his head slowly come up, and his hands grip into the gravel and crush it to dust. I do it anyway, and be like, Sorry! And as you fly off, you hear his voice begin to boom out as he casts Thaumaturgy. And he states, Go! Chase them down! Shoot them from the skies! I'm going to cast Invisibility on Drysar. As you do that, he says that, and the griffins turn upwards and begin flying after you. So you do it just on Drysar? Um, Well, because I can only do it on one... Like, one other person. Okay. So, um, I'm going to... Is there a size requirement in that spell? I don't know. Let me check. Because his mother is the one that cast him. It just says creature. Oh, a creature? Okay, that works. He is considered a creature. As he begins to start fading invisible as you climb into the storm clouds. Um, so he's invisible, and but you and Jimothy are still Well, I'm going to keep... Well, it keep makes me... A creature I touch becomes invisible. So I will have... I will have him and Jimothy invisible, okay. and I have my cloak of many colors. I'm okay. going to make it the same color as the sky. All right, so you do that as you three try to camouflage yourself and are being chased after by these griffin, uh, these griffin riding warriors. So we'll see what happens next as you can. This chase continues, or maybe not. You maybe just you know took all my cool chasing notes and chucked them out the window with your simple problem solving antics. But you know it's okay. It's There's okay. a reason that I kept sending in the Symphony of Ivory. <laughs> Absolutely. That is all right. All right, that's where we'll stop for the day, and then we'll come back next time and see where this goes. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Did you have fun? Uh, sure. Let's, sure. Let's call it that. It's like, oh my god, I can't kill him fast enough because I have to keep keeping Jimothy's the best alive! And this was an unprepared cleric. Who knows what it will look like next? Well, and then we'll be prepared too, so... Mm, Bye, everybody. Bye, have a beautiful time. Thank you for listening. Please leave a review anywhere you've found us. You can reach out to us on Twitter at Bountiful Bards. We hope to see you again on the civilized road. And bring bread and cheese. (laughs) As the story goes, until then.